Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 2, which I'm calling the Matrix Algebra phase of this playlist. And let's just skip ahead to where we left off before. Here we're going to look at quadratic forms. These are so important in linear models. And actually these multivariate analysis that we're going to do. So if A is a symmetric matrix, Y is an n by 1 vector, then the following product is called a quadratic form. So Y transpose A, Y. And it can be mathematically represented like this. And then when you do all these matrix multiplications, you end up with what's called a double sum. And it's the sum from one, I equals 1 to n, J equals 1 to n of AIJ, YI, YJ. And this is it. And so this is a number. And if you think about it, Y transpose is 1 by n. This is n by n. And this vector is n by 1. So the outer numbers are 1 and 1. So it's a 1 by 1 matrix, which is scalar. And you can see that with this sum. When you sum numbers, you get a scalar. Now, sometimes they do away with the double summation and just put one sigma. And then they put i and j, which says it's a double sum over i and j. <clears throat> now, when i equals j in this double sum, we have aii, yi, yi. And sometimes it's written like this. You take out the piece when i and j are equal, and there's n of them, which is this. And then what's left over is the double sum of i and j, but i cannot equal j, and that's what this is. And it's a scalar. Now, a quick example is this. So y transpose a y. When you do this sum, you get this number. And kind of a quick way to think about it is when i and j equal, we're going down this diagonal. So the 3 is you know, 3 times y, 1 squared. 10 times y2 squared, 7 times y3 squared. That's this first sum right here. And then the, then the others, so this is row 2, column 1, and this is row 1, column 2. And, and notice it's a symmetric matrix, right? But these two add to this piece. You know, it's 1, 2. So here, we're at row 3, column 1. This is row 1, column 3. So those two add to this piece, and then the minus 4, so this is row 3, column 2, row 2, column 3, so that adds to the minus 8. And we'll do much, much more with this as we progress through these lectures, but I just wanted to quickly introduce a quadratic form. And this is also, like, for the vector y, we put y1, y2, y3, we could have said x, y, and z, and then we had an equation that we could graph in three dimensions. So all of these are shapes in higher dimensions, and so the, this is an n-dimensional shape. Now, a bilinear form is actually a more general form of quadratic form. Actually, the quadratic form is a special case of a bilinear form. So here we have vectors x and y, n by 1, and a is an n by n matrix. Notice there's not a requirement for it to be symmetric. Then this product is called a bilinear form. And when you do the math, it's a double sum. Again, so it's the same, but we have x and y instead of, you know, y and, and y. And it's a scalar. A quick example would be this. So x transpose a, y. And notice that this is the row 1, column 1, 1, 1. And this one, or let's go to this one. This is row 1, column 2. Right? And so those subscripts match up. So this minus 3, row 2, column 1. And then this is the 2, 2 case. Now, partitioned matrices play a part in linear models also and in multivariate analysis. And so this will be a quick Part, uh, in, introduction to partitioned matrices, and then we'll do more in later videos. So if we have a matrix A that's 3 by 3, and then we partition it, so we'll call this one, say, A11, and then this little vector, A12, and this row vector, A21, and this one, A22. And that's it. So this is a partitioned matrix. But we can do multiplication in these part 
with these partitions instead of the actual numbers. And sometimes that's so much more convenient mathematically to do that. So if we have two A matrices, first they have to be conformable, which means that we have to be able to multiply them. So the number of columns of A has to equal the number of rows of B. And they have to be, yeah, and so they have to be able to do this matrix multiplication. So we partition A and we partition B similarly into these little sub matrices. And then the product, so this first entry here, if we take row one times column one, we get this one, right? The A1 and B1, and then the A12 and the B21. That's what makes this up. Then we take row one times column two. And we get this, row 2 times column 1, row 2 times column 2. And this is it. So this is a matrix product using partitioned matrices. Now let's do this in R. And then we'll call our quits for this video. So we have two matrices, A and B. And now we need to partition them into sub-matrices. So we need to grab different pieces of this. And this is how you do it in R. So we take matrix A, rows 1 and 2, columns 1 and 2, to get this sub-matrix, call it A11. Now notice 2, 1, minus 3, 4. 2, 1, minus 3, 4. So we just grabbed that and stored it in A1. And we do that with the other matrix. So this is rows 1 and 2, column 3, and we store it in A12. Now notice it's a vector. So if we use this approach to grab that little sub matrix R wants to make it a vector and not keep the structure of a matrix so we have to say drop equals false don't drop the matrix structure and then here we have a row three columns one and two and that's this and a22 is row three column three and it's just a one then we also have to do this with the matrix B so I'm just going to go fast because it's really the same thing, but we're just say B instead of A. And here it is. So this is matrix product of A times B, and we get this right here. Now, if we use the formula above, so A11 times B11 plus A12 times B21, we get this matrix. But look at that. That's this part of the matrix. That's this sub-matrix of the, the matrix product. So we do get it back. And then similarly, if we look at this column, 94 and 29, and we do this matrix product according to the formula above, we get that little sub-matrix. And then very similar for this sub-matrix. And then the last, we do this matrix product according to the formula, and we get 101, which is this piece of the matrix. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.